when doing this, by factoring all of the zeros, um, this one actually looks like we can use, um, we could actually factor by grouping. Uh, Richard, if you have your pencil in hand, you can write that down. Um, we could actually factor this by grouping, which I will show you in a subsequent kind of video, just so you guys can understand. However, and the real purpose is that I went through this is not so much to do, do this by factoring, because you always want to, you always, whenever it says find all the zeros, you always want to look to factoring first. But I haven't showed you factoring by grouping. So for you, this would be a non-factorable polynomial. We don't know the techniques. I will show you how to factor this one, though, after I do the video. So the only thing I told you was, well, we can determine what the, ra what the, act what the possible rational zeros are by using the rational zero test, correct? Yes, that's what we did last class period. So I would identify my p and my q first. Right? And then my p or my q is going to be the factors of p over q. This was on your homework. So that's going to be plus or minus 9 over plus or minus 3 over plus or minus 1 over the factors of q, which is just plus or minus 1. Does everybody agree with me? Those are all my possible factors of my p over my q. Is everybody OK with that? Then you just write them out. Well, since everything's over 1, I can simplify that. Plus or minus 9 over plus or minus 3 over plus or minus 1. So those are all the possible rational zeros. We don't know any of the zeros, and we have to find them all. So what we can do is test to see which one's a 0. Because if I know one's a 0, then I can use synthetic division to find another factor, right? Because the answer would be a factor, correct? OK. So I always. Whenever I'm doing a problem like this, what I told you, if you have graphing technology, you're allowed, I would highly recommend graphing this so you guys can see where it crosses. All right. If you don't have a graphing calculator, or it's on the part of the, your um, test where you're not allowed graphing technology, you have to test each one of these. So the way that we test them was using the, so let's, let's write down our formula. So we have the rational zero test. Once we do the rational zero test, we'll test them using the Remainder theorem. If you guys remember the remainder theorem, all we're simply going to do is plug in. I'm going to replace this with an f of x, just so we, you can show that I'm going to do f of 1. So I'll do 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 3 times 1 minus 9. And then we see what that is. Because remember, whatever f of 1 is the remainder theorem, that tells you what the remainder would be we do in synthetic division. So rather than doing synthetic division for all of these, I can simply just um, simplify this. So I do 1 cubed, which is 1, minus 1 squared, which is 1, which is 0. Negative 3 is going to be, uh, so that's 0. That's negative 3 minus 12. Minus 9, that's negative 12. So that's the remainder. So therefore, is 1 a 0? Is 1 a 0? No. So let's do negative 1. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So that's negative 1 minus negative 1, which is negative 2. That becomes a positive 3. So now I'm up to positive 1. Positive 1 minus 9 is going to be a negative 8. So 1 and negative 1 are not actual zeros. They're possible rational zeros, but they're not actually zeros. Is everybody OK with this? Yes? So now I do f of 3. So I'll just move to the next one, 3. 3 cubed minus 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 9. 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 9. Well, 27 minus 9 is 18. Minus 9 is 9. Minus 9 is 0. So guess what? 3 is a 0. That means that's a real 0. That's an x-intercept of our graph. Is everybody OK with that? So therefore, to find actually, if I know that's a 0, I want to find out what the other zeros are. So I got to find the other factors. So to do that, I'll take my 0 and I'll apply long, uh, synthetic division. So now I take my 1, negative 1, negative 3, and negative 9. Make sure it's in descending order and you're not missing any terms, right? Yes? OK. First thing, bring down the 1. 1 times 3 is, and remember, what's the remainder for this one going to be? What's the remainder? It's going to be 0, right? So I know if I don't get 0, then I did something wrong. Cool. 
So that's my remainder, constant, linear, quadratic. Okay, so now that's my other factor, right? If 3 is a 0, what is my other factor? If, zero, if 3 is a 0, what's the factor? x minus 3. Right? We're going to go over that next class. We're going to go over that next problem. If you know what the 0 is, right? Remember, you set it equal to x, set it equal to 0, and then you can multiply it. So it's x minus 3 is the factor. So therefore, I now have x squared plus 2x plus 3. That is another factor. Yes? No? If you have questions, let me know. Yes? Remember, think of the number 6. Does 6 divide into 12? Yes. How many times does 6 divide into 12? Twice. Two times. 2 and 6 are both factors of 12. If you have a number and it evenly divides into another number, that answer is also a factor. Correct? Yes? OK. So now what I have is I can basically write this as x minus 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 3. Well, ladies and gentlemen, so now what I've done is I've rewritten my polynomial as a product. Yes? Yes. I have rewritten my polynomial as a product. Yes? Do you have these two students? Uh, do you need them now? Uh, it doesn't say the time. Uh, 9, 20, 9, 20 10. 10. OK, thank you. Ryan, yours is up here. If you want to grab that. All right. Is everybody OK with this? Think about it this way, guys. 6 divides into 12 two times. 6 times 2 equals 12. Yes? Where are you going? Oh. It's not until now. It's 9.25. Does everybody see that? Does everybody agree I can multiply my two factors? This times this. Multiply my two factors, that gives me my original polynomial. But I'm not trying to find my original polynomial. I already know what the original polynomial is. I'm trying to find the zeros. So if you have something factored, you always set it equal to zero, zero to find the zeros. So now that I've set it equal to 0, can I solve using the zero product property? Yes, I could say x minus 3 equals 0, and x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals 0. Yes? Well, I can easily solve this, right? What's the 0? We already knew that was the 0, right? We already know 1, 0 is x equals 3. But this one, to find the zeros here, remember last problem we had to factor it? Yes? So is this problem, what two numbers multiply to give you 3, add to give you 2? Can you factor that? Can you factor it? No. So guess what? You have to do what? Completing the square or quadratic formula. So I would do quadratic formula. You will need to know the quadratic formula. So if you do not have, not, do not have it memorized, I would make sure you memorize it. That's my a, that's my b, and that's my c. So we have x equals opposite of b, which is negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. Yes? So now x equals negative 2 plus or minus uh, 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times 3 is going to be a negative 12 divided by 2. Yes. So therefore, x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 divided by 2. Can we simplify the square root of negative 8? It's not real anymore, right? Yes. So therefore, we can break square root of negative 8 we can break that down into 4 times 2 times negative 1, where the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of negative 1 is i, and that's the square root of 2. 
So therefore, this simplifies to x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 2 over 2. Well, remember that 2 divides into both of those answers. So my zeros are x equals 3, x equals negative 1, plus or minus i times the square root of 2. And you could break those apart. You could do plus and minus. But you have three, ze you have three solutions, right? We have three solutions. How many solutions am I supposed to have? Three. Does everybody see that? Anybody have any questions on that? The only difference between this problem and last class period's problem was that instead of factoring to find the other factors and zeros, you had to apply the quadratic formula. So I wanted to show you guys this problem because I want you guys to understand. The qu if you don't have, if you, once you find the factor, this, we already, we've already talked about in class. We've practiced this. This, we've talked about this in class. We've practiced it. This, we've talked about this and we've practiced it. But what do you do if you're given, if you already know 1, 0, and you're given another factor? How do you find the other factors? You either factor this, or you either factor this, or you um, apply quadratic formula. OK? Questions? Now, 